No, he's not okay. You're lying to him. He's been knocked unconscious. There are permanent damages to the brain. My name is Dr. Rich Hilton. I am a trauma surgeon. And today I have to react to the recent television show produced by Dana White called Power Slap. This show essentially documents this league, this slap league that Dana White is promoting. And really, ultimately what this is about, this is about people who are trying to make money, essentially putting their bodies on the line and getting injured. I wanna talk about two things. I wanna talk about the risk associated with a hard slap to the face. It's really not that much different than a closed fist punch. But I also wanna talk about the role that the slap league plays in really undermining the issue of combat sports in general and why it's a problematic money grab by greedy promoters and the athletes themselves in the long run are going to suffer. But let's get started and watch one brief clip, which I think really summarizes what's going on here and why this is such a serious problem. So right there, he gets hit in the head. And of course, the editors put ominous music over top of this. How else can you describe what's happening here than the emotion they're trying to bring out to the audience that this someone has been hurt and is suffering? And that's the kind of entertainment that they're promoting here. Let's go back here a little bit and take a little more close look at some of these clips. I think this is really important. So he is struck in the head and begins to fall down. They have a spotter here to try to reduce the amount of head injury by trying to prevent his head from striking the ground in a hard fashion. But notice a couple things. Notice the arms. Notice how the arms come up here in this reflexive action. The legs come up as well. Notice that as well. See this, the arms and the legs come up and he's now posturing. So what's happened here, he's been struck in the head and the brain activity has become disorganized at the cerebral level. The cerebral level will actually mask primitive reflexes. And what we're seeing here is actually exhibition of a primitive reflex. Now, some people might think he's convulsing or seizing. That's not what's going on. It's emerging of a primitive reflex. So that reflex is known as the moral reflex. It's a reflex that's found in babies. Basically, when a baby falls, it's a natural reflex. It's a defense mechanism. It's something very primitive that is protective against injury when there's a fall that happens automatically. When you lose your balance or stagger, there are spinal cord and cerebellar reflexes that occur rapidly that help prevent you from injuring yourself without having to think about it. Many of our activities when we walk and, and interact with our environment happen automatically without us thinking. And that's what's happening here. We have this primitive moral reflex. So this tells us that the cerebrum has become disorganized and we're now emerging reflexes that come from the brainstem and spinal cord. This is an indication of a brain injury. Now I want to talk a little bit about concussion because I think it's super important. A concussion is something we define as a blow to the head resulting in some neurological symptom that doesn't have an associated intracranial pathology that we see on imaging. Now, without a doubt, if you've been not unconscious, you have had a neurological change. You've had some neurological symptom, loss of consciousness. His level of consciousness right now, we would describe using the Glasgow Coma Scale as a three. Maybe he's posturing. You might say that he's got some decortic posturing, so we might get two or three points for that. His eyes are closed. There's no verbal response. So that puts him somewhere between three and six, which is clearly unconscious using our Glasgow Coma Scale. So he has a neurological deficit. Now we don't know if there's any bleeds or anything in the brain. And in fact, I can almost guarantee that slap league, if you were to CT scan these people, some people would have hemorrhages, especially if you used an MRI or something very sensitive for hemorrhage, you would find small hemorrhages. And so that would actually be definition of something even more severe than a mild traumatic brain injury. That would put you in a category of moderate or severe. That would put you into a category of, again, bleeding in the brain always causes neurological damage that's permanent. So here we are exhibiting signs of essentially a concussion. So we're watching someone that's part of 
the normal course of this sport is to cause a concussion. Knockouts in my mind when it comes to combat sports are an unfortunate side effect of the whole activity of combat. There are multiple ways for you to win or lose an event when it comes to combat sports. Tap out, knockout, technical knockout, judge's decision, for example. Here, when it comes to slap league or any kind of slapping sport, the unconsciousness is a key element to success. That's a huge part of this. And if you're knocking someone to the point of unconsciousness, you are absolutely 100% causing brain damage. We see signs here. Now, in my mind, this whole scene actually gets worse. We're going to play a little further. Take some deep breaths. You're doing fine. Dr. D is next to you. I got the doctor next to you. You got knocked out, okay? You knocked out doing what? Like fighting? You're, sl you're in the slap of it. The guy says, you're okay, you're okay. No, he's not okay. You're lying to him. He's been knocked unconscious. There are permanent damages to the brain that are happening here. This is clearly a concussion, and we should not be advocating for a sport that is based around concussions. Now, this is where I want to step in and talk a little more philosophically about combat sports. I grew up doing combat sports. I was involved in jujitsu, karate, kickboxing, all those things. And I love the idea of that type of contest. And I can understand how it's difficult to draw a line sometimes between that type of combat sport and this type of combat sport. I think Joe Rogan put it fairly well when he looked at this. He said, there's really no strategy. There's really no puzzle to be solved. I think that was the word that he used. The problem is, is this takes the element of fighting down to the, the, the absolute basics, which is who can tolerate the most injury. If we had a sport where people were attempting to break athletes' legs, there would be absolutely no appetite for it because that would push it to the point of extreme. There is a, there, the fact that these people are getting injured and we can't see it, the fact that they seem normal after when they wake up and recover makes us seem like there's not something serious going on. But I can tell you underneath in the brain, there are permanent and serious changes happening. So the fact that we don't see the injury doesn't make it better. What makes this different than say, just punching people straight in the face is because what would we would see if people were just being punched straight in the face, we'd see teeth flying out, we would see blood. And all of a sudden that would change our appetite for this activity. The final thing I want to say here, and I want to really speak to the doctors who are involved in commissioning this type of activity. You see from the episode where one of the athletes was denied entry to the house, so to speak, based on a medical condition. So clearly doctors are complicit in screening people for the sport. And I want to tell you that you are not doing your job. This is about money, very clearly. You can see Dana White literally like salivating because he knows how entertaining this is. You can see his excitement. And I can guarantee you those doctors are being paid very well. But what they're doing, they're putting people's lives and future at risk. Those doctors, you, I'm speaking to you, are the worst. You are the worst part of our profession. You have sold your integrity and you rationalize it away by saying you have some sort of experience as a fight doctor or a trauma doctor or even a neurologist. I'm sure they have a neurologist doing this, but you have sold your ethics. You've denied everything that you stood for. When you started medical school, you thought you wanted to be a benefit to people. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you in your interview, you believed that you were going to do something good for society. But clearing people and being complicit in this type of activity shows that you are more harmful than helpful. You are the worst kind of doctor. Trust me. I am deeply appalled by this activity. And I felt passionately that I had to talk about it today on this video. This is a really hot, rough take. I'm just flowing here, speaking to you in the camera. I'm sure I'll have an opportunity to talk with my colleagues more about this and we can do a more detailed breakdown of what's going on. But I am seriously concerned about this sport. I appreciate you sticking around and watching this to the end. I really do hope that we can rise above this type of activity and focus really on athletic activities that really are safer and more beneficial to the athletes that are involved. I appreciate you watching once again. Um, 
normally I would say like or subscribe, but this video is just too um, concerning for me. I, I can't I can't really say that at this point in time. But again, I appreciate you watching and I hope to comment a bit more on this. Maybe with a bit more time, I can do a more detailed breakdown and provide you with more information. Once again, thank you.